Hi guys, welcome back to Cryptids Canada. I just wanted to make a little announcement before I get started. Um, if you have any stories about, you know, any cryptids, Bigfoot, Dogman, Skinwalkers, Ghost Stories, Alien Abductions, Chupacabra, The Rake, honestly the list goes on and on pretty much. Um, if you've had an experience with something odd and unusual, then we are happy to receive your email. Um, all the emails can be sent to cryptidscanada at outlook.com. Okay, um, I got a pretty, pre a couple of pretty good uh, emails to read to you. This one is called, These Things Should Not Even Exist. Um, Dear Cryptids Canada, I have never in my life heard of this stuff. Well, ghosts, Bigfoot, aliens, obviously, but not all these other things. This world has become crazy and frightening. In a nutshell, I was left a cottage and a couple of acres of land by my best friend Jaden, who died from a long, horrible illness. We spent many years going to that cottage, ever since we were kids. Many great memories. So when she died, January 2nd, 2020, I thought about spreading her ashes up there. Neither of us had close family, so it was her request that I get her ashes. When all this st stuff started with the coronavirus, I decided to pack up my van and go to Jaden's cottage. Well, now my cottage. Just to get away and to grieve in private. And to spread her ashes. I got there after dark, so I put on some music and poured a glass of wine and unpacked the van. I should mention the cottage is very well equipped. It has power and indoor plumbing, thank God. We were only 75 feet from the beautiful lake with a couple of breeding, a breeding pair of loons. I went to bed early because I love to wake up early and have coffee on the porch. It was still pretty cold out, so there was no swimming on this trip. The first full day I was there, I busied myself with chores and enjoyed the breaks in between with co a coffee and a book on the porch. We have, our, we have to chop our own firewood and stack it. The last few years, we used the supplies but didn't restock them because of Jaden's illness. The next day, I pulled the canoe out of storage and I put it in the water. I was doing the deed I dreaded, and that was spreading Jaden's ashes. It was a lovely, crisp, but sunny day. I rode to the middle of the road to the middle of the lake, and I cried as I spread the ashes. Just as I finished, I heard a howl from a wolf. I thought it sounded very close, and I felt very nervous all of a sudden. I paddled back to the dock and tied the canoe rather than p pulling it up on shore. I went inside and pulled out my laptop. I searched for wolves in the area. There were no known cases. I thought that I, that maybe I misidentified the sound. Perhaps it was a dog of sorts. I was relieved that I didn't have to worry about that. But just in case, I got my handgun from underneath the van seat. If I needed it, it would do me no good under the seat. I barbecued pork chops for dinner and watched videos as I ate. I went out on the porch with my coffee to watch the sun go down on the lake. As usual, I was mesmerized by it. But I started to see flickers of something out of the corner of my eye. I heard rustling as well. I started to feel fear rising, but I, I fought to stay calm. I pretended not to see or hear it as I glanced closer to it, hoping I could catch a better view. As I was paying attention to the right side of the porch, I stiffened with terror as a low growl came from the left. I looked over and there was a coyote in the bush on the left side of the cabin. My gun was in a holster on my right thigh. My right hand was holding my coffee cup. I had given it no thought at all and I threw my cup right at it. I just missed it 
and it looked to where my cup went. So I stood up and I pulled my gun. I was two feet from the door. I lifted my gun and its eyes actually widened. It knew what my gun was and now it seemed afraid. I stepped back and was able to get inside the door. I peeked out and it was gone. I was shocked. I didn't know much about coyotes, but in my mind, they were small wolves. I figured it, br it was brought in by the smell of the barbecue. I decided to stay in for the rest of the evening. After I tidied up, it was dark. So I turned on some music and started watching videos on my laptop. I started hearing sounds like pebbles being thrown at the door. I had stupidly left the door open, but had the glass storm door shut. I pretended not to notice, and I lifted my eyes, and what I saw I will never forget. There was a wolf standing on two legs, and it was leaning into my storm door. It was tapping the glass panel with its razor-sharp claws. It lifted its lips to reveal large, razor-sharp teeth. Not normal dog and wolf teeth. These were like shark's teeth. I did everything to steady my breath and I stood up and walked into the, my bedroom. I shut the door and slid my bed in front of the door. I broke down and cried. I was terrified that that thing was going to get in and kill me. I got a hold of myself and I listened at the door. I could still hear the tapping. I crossed the room and hid on the far side of the bed where it couldn't see me if it looked in the bedroom window. I sat there for hours, holding my gun and praying. When the sun came up, I quietly slid my bed back out of the way and peeked out the door. I couldn't see it anymore. I packed up as much as I could and as much as I needed and got the heck out of Dodge. But on the drive home, I got angrier and angrier. What the heck are these things? Why have I never seen or heard of them before? I, I do know that once you see these monsters, you cannot unsee them. They are not supposed to exist. They are like the link between humans and animals. They are literally part man and part dog. In the days since getting back home, I do know one thing I've decided. I'm going to up my arsenal and not let it run me out of my sanctuary, which is the cabin that I spent the happiest times of my life. I also know that I am prepared to make the necessary changes to make the cabin stronger. But as it stands right now, I'm going to keep trying to get over this fear and take back what is mine. At, lo at least for mine and Jaden's memories. I love that I could send this story to you without having to give you all my private information. Linda. Wow. Can you imagine never having heard of these things? At least for most of us in this community, we've heard of them and they terrify us still. But, you know, can you imagine just all of a sudden seeing something like that? I, I can't imagine it. And I know there's lots of people that want to see these things. I mean, I went through a phase too. I, I wanted to see one too. But when you start thinking about it, like like she said, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And that to me is, uh, that's an uncontrolled thing. And I, I don't like that. So on to the next story. Um, this one's kind of cute. And um, she calls it Frolicking with Bigfoot. So she starts out, Hello Cryptids Canada. I apologize right from the jump that this isn't a blood and guts story. I thought it might shed a little light on the everyday life of a Bigfoot. First, I want to tell you that I am an avid kayaker and I live near a beautiful river. My friends and I have just started kayaking down this river last year. Sometimes we just tie our rigs together and float lazily down the river. I love taking video and my other two friends are accomplished photographers. So normally we just get dropped off at the town up the river from ours and then we get picked up an hour downstream. 
but this one day we decided to drive upstream over an hour and get picked up an hour downstream from our town. Whew, that's a mouthful. We heard there was some very mild rapids in a couple of the spots, so we decided to keep what we took to a minimum in case we got dumped. That meant one cell phone. This may seem drastic, but we were not professionals by any means, and we always thought it was better to be safe than sorry. This was so exciting to us because we had never been on the river this far upstream. We were thoroughly enjoying ourselves and totally relaxed when we ventured into a beautiful spot. It was gorgeous. It was lush and green with white sandy beaches. It looked impossible to get to because of the thick woods and brush on the other side of the river. I desperately wanted to get a video of this spot the next time we came down river. And my friends agreed too. We were talking about stopping there the next time and maybe even camping there as well. There was perfect trees to tie ropes to and swing into the deep pools. We noticed just up from that spot there was a familiar bu building on the other side of the river. So we got thinking we could maybe drive to that building then load our kayaks and walk across the river to the beach and set up camp. The river wasn't too deep, so we were getting pretty excited about this. We agreed to meet the next day and drive to the building and speak to the owners or the manager to see if we could park there and walk across the river from there. But it turned out the other girls had other stuff to do. But I was so excited I went myself. The building manager was out but would be back soon, so I decided to walk the short distance through the woods to look upstream to the beach. But when I got there, I was in shock. There was a giant hair-covered Sasquatch sitting in the water with another Sasquatch that looked much smaller playing and swimming next to the big one. And as if that wasn't already the most amazing thing you could ever imagine, a little tiny one I perceived to be an infant climbed over the mother's shoulder and fell forward into mother's arms. They were obviously playing and enjoying the nice water and sunny day. I was scrambling with my bag to get my phone out to videotape them. I was feeling around and I couldn't find it, so I plopped my bag down out of frustration and I was searching desperately. All of a sudden, I remember tossing it into the console after being told that the building manager would be back soon. I was pissed off, to put it mildly, but when I looked up, they were just disappearing into the brush. I know, beyond a doubt, that they knew I was there because the mother stopped and turned to look at me before she disappeared. They had somehow heard me rummaging through my bag, or maybe they saw me through the trees. I'm not sure but I honestly hated myself for a long time after that because I was so close and would have got the footage that would have convinced the world of their existence. I told some friends, and now I'm the loony chick that saw Bigfoot on the river. Funny thing is, my biggest critic came to me afterwards and talked to me about where the location was so he could put up trail cameras. Luckily, I never mentioned the Bigfoot to the other two girls I kayaked with. I just told them the build building manager said no and the beach property was private as well. I guess I feel like the Bigfoot deserved their privacy and freedom to be left alone. And it's signed, Jill the Kayaker. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but I think that when they are so close to where we live that maybe at least the authorities should be made aware. I don't know because I know the authorities don't take them seriously either. But uh, I thought that was a pretty cool story. They obviously keep to themselves and don't cause too much trouble, I guess. Anyways, guys, I want to say thank you for listening. And uh, you have yourself a great night. And I'll be back here in a couple of days. Remember, if you have any stories about cryptids, please send them in to me. I'd be so happy to read them. Have a great night.
Bye-bye for now.